Yeah, so I'm Ben Franks, University of Bremen in Germany. I'll be talking about robots, robots pancakes, and computer games. Uh, this is work I conducted with my colleagues Jan Smedink, Peter Schmidt, Andre Haidu, Michael Beetz, and Rainer Malaka. And this is a collaboration between the Digital Media Lab and the Institute for Artificial Intelligence. So in the next uh, 15 minutes, I'll be telling you um, how playing strategy games um, can teach robots how to cook. So we heard a lot about uh, human-like robot behavior, and I think we all agree that this is very important for many areas, such as uh, uh, robotic household aids, care for the elderly. And we heard, also heard a lot about its advantages. So if their behavior corresponds to our mental models, or the mental models of humans, um, we have kind of less learning uh, to appreciate their behavior. Uh, it's safer since we can predict their behavior and in general fosters interaction and communication and cooperation. Um, now, programming robots to do all this, is to, do, to master everyday activities, is still a big challenge in robotics uh, because seemingly mundane everyday activities are vaguely described and have a high variation of how they are actually executed. Uh, Sean had this image in his talk too, I saw. <laughs> So a method of programming anthropomorphic uh, robot behavior is programming by demonstration, often also called imitation learning. This uses data on human behavior to generate action models uh, uh, for robots. And this requires a lot of data that must be generated by humans, which can actually be quite tedious because these are often very mundane tasks and you need a lot of data. Now in a nutshell, our approach is to design games around tasks in order to increase the motivation to demonstrate. And our contributions are a design approach for leveraging existing game design knowledge for increasing the effectiveness of motion data acquisition. So the idea behind data-driven robot programming is that most humans have a highly, uh, highly competent at common manual activities such as household chores, cooking, and there is a great potential in acquiring this knowledge, this embodied knowledge, from human sources. And this, there are various ways in which this can be done. Obviously, you can just observe humans uh, in real-world tasks, um, which comes with, if you want to know exactly how they do it, with a host of motion tracking challenges. You can also have humans externally manipulate actual robots who, through sensors in their joints, uh, can then kind of learn what humans teach them directly which obviously requires the robot hardware, but also humans, um, the, the external manipulation of robots is not the same as actually executing these tasks them, uh, by humans themselves. So the latter would much better be able to use embodied knowledge. So what robotics um, people do is they have human behavior demonstrated in simulated environments. So the motion capture takes place through the interaction with a, with a VR environment um, and this has the benefits of a fully observable and fully configurable world. But the question remains is how to motivate humans to actually do this, to actually repeatedly demonstrate boring tasks. And our approach is to transform this experience of demonstrating manual tasks into a more enjoyable activity, so turning data acquisition uh, into a game. So essentially turning this into something more like this. The rationale is that while um, kind of baking virtual pancakes can get tiresome and the, the, the enjoyment will diminish over time, a well-designed game can captivate for hours, as we all know. And also, the freedom in the game design allows us for tailoring behavior, human behavior, in order to generate specific desired uh, behavior and outcomes. So our design strategy is uh, situated toward the gaming and whole side of the design space. So there are various approaches uh, in which you can go about this. Um, we chose to have a rule-based game rather than just playful interaction um, in order to, because uh, this allows us to design demonstration into the game mechanics uh, in order to pose tasks implicitly. 
and also you can, we can use game aesthetics such as challenge and narrative in order to improve the experience. And also have a whole game rather than just adding game elements to a tool in order to leverage existing design knowledge on game genres, on existing game concepts, and thus increase the likelihood to, for long-term motivation. So cooking tasks are a paradigmatic scenario for household activities. Um, these are complex and diverse manual, uh, they involve complex and diverse manual actions, which are fairly easy to perform for most able-bodied people, but are hard to describe exactly in a formal and algorithmic way. And uh, we talk pancake making in particular because uh, this is very paradigmatic and used in prior research. Uh, so the characteristics, if you look at them, of cooking are um, a very confined planar workspace. You have well-defined manual operations uh, on objects within this workspace, and you can kind of actively man manage uh, events, which means you can decide on your, uh, by yourself when to put on like the stove to increase the heat. And um, we find that this matches, these characteristics match particularly well to the well-known strategy game genre, uh, in particular tower defense games. Um, since the player has a godlike position of a commander, he exerts manipulation through uh, building commands on um, a scene, on a stage, on visible targets such as sites and towers, upgrading towers. And uh, he has a certain control over the turn of events, sequence of events unfolding by so wave management, by the calling waves. So uh, it's not real time, enemies don't come, consist come consistently or repeatedly, but you can call them in waves. And you'll find that other game genres violate the characteristics I mentioned. Um, for instance, action adventure uh, they have very expansive, often unlimited game worlds as opposed to a very defined, uh, confined world. And you can read more about that in our paper. Um, so if we look at this, um, in particular pancake making now, regarding the intentions uh, uh, an agent would have and the actions actually performed, and on the other side, for tower defense games, you can find like a conceptual matching there. But we also observe that, or we reason that um, on the task domain, we're really only interested in the actual movements. We don't really care what in the original task was the intention, like heating, uh, heating something, stirring something. We just really want the people to do the actual motion. Uh, whilst on the game domain, we care more about the intentions uh, and not so much how that's actually perceived, because this is like the freedom of the control design, of the designing the game controls. So bringing that together, kind of matching that, we have our game controls for um, matching these task actions to the game intentions. And you can easily see that this can be uh, extended to match various game intentions, game genres, and various uh, action definitions in the various tasks. So we present 3Defend, a freehand control tower defense game that we designed. It has a simplified virtual hand interaction, VR style interaction. You select your action type uh, through a toolbar. Uh, it's a very simple game story involving robotic uh, aliens that want to attack Earth. You need to defend Earth in space through robotic, uh, through a, a space defense. And gameplay is typical of a tower defense game in that creeps or enemies move over the stage along a predefined path. Uh, players must build towers to defend against these enemies um, who keep coming. Uh, building costs energy credits, which you can also harvest by destroying enemies. And since uh, like the properties and invulnerabilities of creeps and enemies increases over time, you kind of need to fine tune your tower placement strategy. So coming back to the initial motivation, we posed two research questions. So does demonstrating tasks in the game uh, provide a better experience than following, merely following instructions in a virtual environment? And also, does uh, the data that we get from this have at least the level of quality that, uh, of, that, of data recorded from mere instructions in a virtual environment? 
So we designed an experiment where the treatment was to execute manual actions in a virtual environment, and the conditions were explicit textual instructions, which is actually the same as the game, minus the enemies, overlays, uh, less detailed assets, no animations, and the actual 3 defend game. So it was a within subjects design. We looked at player experience and data quality, uh, 16 participants, and the setup was typical gaming setup. We used a consumer level hand tracker and a regular 24 inch screen. And uh, the order of treatment was alternated. So looking at the results of player experience, we used the PNS um, uh, questionnaire. We find that there's no significant difference regarding uh, the subjective assessment of competence, perceived competence, and intuitive controls. But we have a significantly higher assessed autonomy and presence in the game condition. And this was also um, corroborated by responses in the interview we conducted after uh, the session. So that's a nice result and kind of confirms what we'd expected or hoped. Looking at the motion data, um, Regarding action frequency, the game actually garners significantly fewer occurrences of actions, demonstrations of actions over time for all action types. Uh, we can also see that our game design needs, still needs balancing. Uh, there was actually very little inducement to perform the turn actions, so that's something we need to improve. Also regarding movement speed, so the actual speed of motions is also significantly slower in, uh, all, for all actions in the game condition. So you could say this is a little bit disappointing regarding our initial motivation. However, we let players or participants continue uh, voluntarily beyond a certain threshold. So after um, a certain amount of minutes, um, we said, okay, you're done. You can continue playing if you like. And actually, players uh, in the game condition significantly played uh, um, rather longer than just following the rote instructions. They didn't really want to continue with that. So in total, the absolute numbers of demonstrations we got was actually more for the game than in the instructions where people got bored quickly. So 15 out of 16 participants extended the gameplay voluntarily and played on average 30 minutes. And um, we can also look at precision, albeit only uh, regarding the poor task, the uh, action, the other actions didn't, were not target-based, so it wasn't as easy to assess that. And here we also see an interesting uh, observation that the instructions, um, yeah, this is the amount of, sorry, this is the amount of spill. Uh, so uh, the poor task had, the, had a, a kind of virtual fluid that you spill on something deliberately, and in the game there was significantly lower spill, less spill uh, in the poor task. Um, we also observed that other motion characteristics, such as the height at which uh, people poured or turned, or a kind of the, the peak of, the mo of motion arcs, uh, did not s uh, differ significantly, so very well, very, fairly um, comparable um, motions otherwise. So in analysis, we can say that game provide a better experience regarding autonomy and presence. Um, a higher motivation for, of, of participants can actually beat the lower productivity that games have in this case. Um, and there was an apparent willingness uh, to spend more time gaming than to follow rote instructions uh, and demonstrations. The task completion time was lower. However, precision was higher for the game. Uh, so players seemed to care more about the outcomes of their actions in the game. And if you think about this, this makes sense. Uh, spilling valuable nanobots, which was the game mechanic for 3D Fend, uh, wastes credits, uh, while the control uh, did not penalize imprecision in any way. And this is also corroborated by, by other work on gamification um, for such kinds of tasks. We can also state that the quality of motion data, while differing in speed and precision, uh, in other cases, in other respects, uh, it was overall kind of 
at least the same, and you could even consider that the data quality increases because of the precision performance. So I'd like to summarize. We presented a design strategy for using uh, games for task demonstration. Presented a proof of concept design for harvesting embodied knowledge in workbench style manipulation tasks through games. Our study shows that games increase the play experience and precision. And also, I believe we present the first freehand tower defense game. Right, now I'm happy to answer questions. Uh, or you can see for yourself why PR2 here still needs you to play more tower defense. Thank you. We do have time for several questions. Again, for anyone who joined uh, later, please use the microphone in the middle. So uh, then le let me start with, uh, with a question. Uh, there have been some sort of approaches over the, the past years to use crowdsourcing to right. generate data for, for, for robots. So I was wondering, about like if you see any, could you discuss any possibilities about bringing that game aspect uh, online accessible to, to, to a self-motivated user, user crowd? Absolutely, I mean crowdsourcing is kind of the intention behind this. Um, like, and this was a point where we used a consumer level hand tracker, so it was the Leap Motion, you guys, most of you know it. Uh, this is really low price and also integrated in many laptop models, many hardware. So it's actually reasonable to extend, to expect people to have access to this hardware and play this game at home uh, or anywhere and demonstrate these tasks and, you know, through playing the game, contributing to robotics research and uh, gathering data for, for on various types of actions. So you could, you could uh, imagine, you know, going beyond cooking, other kind of workbench style tasks and activities uh, being able to, could, which could be modeled by this approach. Thank you very much. Uh, this concludes the session.